will come forward. Please join me. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Christ has come, but if he is to come into our lives, we must prepare the way for him. We will turn from our sins and make room in our hearts for Christ Jesus Please join us in our opening hymn, Silent Night. Please be seated, and let us pray together. 
Almighty God, who calls us to turn from our sins in preparation to receive your Son as Lord and Savior, accept our confessions as we open our hearts to Jesus, that his advent may fill our lives with your Spirit. In his name we pray. Amen. I encourage everyone to read from Isaiah 35, verses 1 through 10, Luke 1, verses 47 through 55, that's often referred to as the Magnificat, uh, and, the gospel, and, and the Epistle James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. I will be sharing with you our, from our Gospel the, of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 2 through 12. Now when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. May God add his richest blessings to the reading and the hearing of his holy, holy word. Please stand as you are able, for it came upon a midnight clear.
please be seated. with God 
operating outside of the box that he tried to put God into. Or maybe, and this one's for Pam and Gary, maybe God just doesn't like Buffalo. <laughs> I'll probably hear from that. John the Baptist, though, his world had shrunk, literally. The one who was preparing the way, the one who was in the wide open wilderness is now being held captive in a prison cell. The one who baptized the Son of God in the River Jordan, the one who said, here is the Son of God. Now, he has to rely on his jailer in order to bring him a cup of soothing water. The one who was so sure that Jesus was the one that God was sending now wonders, are you the one who is to come? Tell me. I really want to know. I need to know. You see, Jesus was not following in John's outline for his ministry. John was not, or Jesus was not following John's mission statement for him, his step-by-step -step plan for a successful messianic ministry. John had told the people that the ax was lying at the root, ready to cut to chop down the unworthy trees. He had promised that the chaff would burn with unquenchable fire. But Jesus didn't seem to be pointing his finger of judgment. There was no smoldering wood pile of sinners. And this must have meant for a little bit, a mild at least disappointment for John. He was at that very moment sitting in prison awaiting his own beheading. Because, you see, he had stood up to King Herod and called him out on his illegal marriage. See, King Herod had divorced his own wife and had his brother divorce that wife, Herodias, and he ended up marrying her. And that made John furious and called Herod out on it. But Herod still had a presence with, with John. He didn't, he had him in prison, but it wasn't until he threw a party and Herodias' daughter danced and pleased him that he made that terrible wish a terrible command. Tell me what you want and I will give it to you. And she asked for John the Baptist's head. And so he gave it to her. He was at that very moment awaiting his own beheading because he had stood up and challenged King Herod for his unrighteous marriage. Now if Jesus was really looking for some chaff worthy of burning, he could have started by lighting a match to King Herod and get John out of prison. Instead, what was Jesus doing? Jesus was pronouncing forgiveness. He was healing the sick. He was bringing good news to the poor. Was that really what Jesus was supposed to be doing? And John was thinking, are you the one that is to come? Or should I hope for someone else? Sometimes Jesus says and does some strange things, at least in our eyes. Certainly unexpected things. Things that aren't what we hope they would be. And because of that, John asked his disciples to go, as we ask, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for someone else? Each of us has expectations of the kind of Savior that we want. Now, 
Now some do want a brimstone and fire-breathing Messiah who points out everyone else's wrong. Some of us want Jesus who will champion our call. Some others will want a Jesus who will be on our side, our side of the issues, our side of, of the of, of, of our causes that is out there. Some maybe just want a gentle shepherd savior who will not demand anything from us, but only assure us that he loves us. Now sooner or later though, our ideas of Jesus bump up against the reports of what he is doing, either in scripture or in the world. Jesus, the real Jesus, the real Messiah, Lord, Shepherd, Savior, Friend, Redeemer, will at times upset our expectations. Because it's not our expectations that he came to fulfill, but God's. <coughs> and as that happens, we ask, in many different ways. And we are confronted. Do we want to follow the living Christ? Or do we want to worship our idea of what he should be? Do you want the thrill and hope and challenge of a life with the living Christ? That is a question that is very much worth thinking about. Real, the hope, the challenge of a life dealing with the living Christ. Or maybe the comfort of worshiping an idol of our own making. Now John wondered if Jesus was really the one in whom he should hope. So he went to Jesus as best he could. He was in prison, so how could he go? Well, his disciples still had an opportunity to visit him in prison, and so John sent them out to seek Jesus and to ask him directly, not to go around the back and listen to the hearsay, but to go straight to the, the cause, the person, and find out for themselves, straight to the source, rather than just muddling along, making assumptions staying in the dark about who or what Jesus is. My friends, we are asked to do the same thing, to go to Jesus directly with our concerns, with our wandering. How do we do this? Well, we can do it in a number of ways, by participating in the ways Jesus had given to his church to know him better, by gathering in community, I know I've had many people in saying that, well, you know, I can worship God on my own. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But there is something that you lose. You are only one person and you don't get the feedback that is out there from a community of believers. We don't get that, that uplifting sense and that prayerful sense of knowing that there are others dealing with the same issues that we are, or different issues, or who have been through those issues, and can help guide us along the way. By gathering in community, we can confront Jesus himself, as Jesus himself said, where two or three are gathered together, there I am in their midst. Study. Study with other Christians. Study with other Christian wanderers. Pray. Take communion. Worship. Praise Him. Help someone who is in need. And as I said, praise Him. Praise Him even when you drop the ball. Maybe Jesus wasn't exactly what John was expecting. But you know what, John, what Jesus did? He did bring fire. But the fire was of the Holy Spirit. He sought out sinners and he forgave them. 
He really let the unworthy have it. But what he let them have was grace. Grace upon grace. John couldn't see it for himself, locked up in his own prison cell. So he asked his disciples, and they came back and had a reply. And he received a beautiful vision that came from Jesus himself. Tell him what you see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have good news brought to them. My friends, let us not drop the ball. And let us worship him for the Savior that God knows that we need. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, as we gather together, we are seekers, seeking the truth, seeking the word that had been made flesh. We give you thanks for your presence, power, and grace that is with us. We give you thanks for this particular season that we are in, for the grace that is there, for the fire that Jesus brings, the fire of the Holy Spirit, for the condemnation that it comes to us, and yet for the grace upon grace that lifts us out of that condemnation and makes us right with you and with one another. My friend, my Lord and Savior, we give you thanks and praise for being the Savior, <laughs> the friend, the companion that we need in life. And we ask for your guidance to be with us. We ask all of those names that you have been called, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, that you will use them here not only among us, but amongst the world upon which we live. May we hear those wishing Merry Christmas more loud and clear. May we hear those bells ringing that will bring peace as we live out in Jesus' name of who we are called Fill us with your spirit and send us out. And Lord, forgive us for our frantic statements. Forgive us when we point fingers rather than pointing and looking at a mirror of ourselves. And as we do, fill us with that spirit that will bring us closer and closer to you and to one another. We ask and call for your blessing to be upon our gifts, the gifts that we have bring, our tithes, our offerings, our sacrifice that we have placed upon the altar upon entering or upon departing. May they be used for your glory. We thank you for all of the, the gifts and the offerings to go to not only the Thanksgiving families, but to those Christmas families through Leonor High School. We thank you for the gifts and the scars, the mittens, the slippers, whatever has been brought up for the giving tree that it will go to bring warmth to those who are in need. We give you thanks, Lord, and ask for your special blessing to be upon those gifts that those who receive them may feel your presence, may be guided by your spirit, and may follow you all the days of their lives. Guide us, bless us, and Lord, bring your healing hand to us, each according to our needs. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones. We pray for the families of those firefighters who sought out a person trapped in a fire. And 
and lost their own lives in the process. Be with their families. Help them through, especially this time of the year. And reassure them of your power, of your grace, of the resurrection that is theirs already. Be with each one of us touch us as only you can, each according to our needs. We ask these things in Christ's name to call us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let me ask, what changes have you seen? Still haven't seen? What has been changing and altering? Well, we got the live points in. I'll have those out. Papers uh, uh, for for next Sunday um, for all of those who donated uh, and, and, and placed them in, in the church. They were all up here in front, but that, that's one thing. But there's still something else that has been moving about. Uh, as in, uh, maybe you just need another week to uh, really get a chance to see it. But uh, uh, one of the things that we always what, what was it that we always had on the altar? The nativity. The nativity. Yeah. Was there it's last week, huh? over here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and the week prior, it was back in the corner. So it's getting a little closer. <laughs> and we also had Jesus that is here. And where is that? <laughs> Or do I make you wait? That's a little trickier. That will be another uh, lesson for us. But it's not quite as obvious. However, if you go to the Gospel of John, maybe you can figure how and how Jesus is right. Let us stand as we are able for Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <clears throat>
grace and the love of God surround you and hold you and fill you with all that is from above. May he be born as we are prepared to receive him. May he be born anew this year and live within us now and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 